Hi everybody, this is Richard from Holden Advisors and I'm here today to talk to you about Rule 3 from Pricing with Confidence, Picking a Pricing Strategy. While I recognise that the very thought of choosing a pricing strategy can make the most capable manager recoil with terror, I want to try and convince you today that actually setting a pricing strategy is a relatively straightforward task and can be done with a few pieces of information already at your fingertips. A pricing strategy can act as your north star as you navigate the changing needs of customers in the competitive landscape, but you need to be prepared to change your strategy as business conditions change. Being proactive can lead to huge advantages over competitors. You'll be happy to hear that there are only three pricing strategies out there, skim, neutral and penetrate. In a skim pricing strategy, you set prices high with respect to mainstream competitors. This strategy hinges on offerings having differentiated value over those of competitors and that you're able to demonstrate this value to customers. In neutral pricing, prices are set close to those of mainstream competitors. This is especially important when you want the basis of competition to be something other than price. This is generally a safe strategy to choose when markets are growing slowly or not at all. Penetration pricing involves setting prices low with respect to competition, precisely because you want the main driver of the purchase decision to be price. But beware. While it might be seductive to think of all the extra volume and market share you can get through this strategy, customers who come to you based on price will be the first to leave when a low price competitor comes along. Choosing the right pricing strategy at the right time and being able to change as circumstances demand is key. Several factors come into the decision for choosing a pricing strategy. These include, one, the value of your offering relative to competition. If you are in the envi enviable position of having a highly differentiated product, all pricing strategies are open to you. Second, where is the offering in the industry life cycle? What works in growth may be death in maturity, and I'll speak more on this in a minute. Three, a knowledge of industry economics and structure is absolutely critical. Industries with high fixed costs require different pricing considerations to those whose costs are mainly variable. Fourth, what are the competitive dynamics of your industry? How will competition respond to your pricing? Are your competitors likely to think long-term profits in a healthy industry? Or do you have competitors who take a win-every-deal based on price approach, long-term be damned? When facing a, volunt a volatile competitor, a neutral pricing strategy is generally safest, but it always pays to keep competitors worried that you will adopt a, a penetration strategy if you need to defend your market position. And finally, internal consensus. To be successful, managers across the organisation need to understand the strategy and what they need to do to execute it successfully. If senior management don't buy in, you'll be fighting a losing battle. Okay, so let's discuss the product life cycle in a bit more detail. But first, a word on elasticity. The most important thing to understand is that markets are only elastic in one phase, growth. Only in growth can you expect new customers to come to the market as a response to reduced prices. There are two reasons for this. First, in most business-to-business -business markets, demand is derived from a downstream market. No matter how much tyre manufacturers slash their prices, General Motors won't add a fifth wheel to a sedan. Second, some customers switch suppliers often without changing their volume. So while things might, may seem elastic at a brand level, they're actually inelastic at a market level. And this is called the cross elasticity of demand. Okay, now let's look at pricing at various stages of the industry life cycle. First introduction. The challenge here is getting innovators and early adopters to recognize your value. And innovative companies spend a lot of time on this. Customers who are willing to take the risk on an unproven technology see the value and how your offering can benefit them. Consequently, they're generally price insensitive. Indeed, with little experience to go on, early customers will use price as a proxy for quality. 
So a skimming strategy can actually help adoption while maximizing profits. Next, during growth, the number of customs explodes and competition enters the fray. Here, sticking with a st skim strategy can actually retard market growth. And competitors that enter the market often seek to serve these price sensitive customers who are coming in new to the market. Leaving this market segment open allows competitors to gain a foothold in the industry. And left unchecked, these companies grow market share and turn their eyes to your high value customers. The ideal strategy is for you to break for the bottom yourself, offering a stripped down flank product at lower prices to compete at the low end of the market. So you're going to use a skim strategy at the high end or even a penetration strategy at the low end of the market to fight these ankle biters. As the industry matures, market sales growth and slows and lowering price no longer brings in new customers to the market. Here, penetration pricing can be poison. If you lower prices to threaten market share of a competitor, why would they not just match that price? Price wars started this way can devastate industry profits. Better is to use a neutral strat strategy at the low end of the market and skim at the high end if you have offerings with differential value that segments of customers are still willing to pay more for. And finally, in declining markets, sales diminish as customers leave for a newer technology. Customers who stay typically have a strong preference for the old technology, making them relatively price insensitive. Therefore, the best move is often to focus exclusively on a skim strategy. Okay, so in conclusion, defining your pricing strategy is relatively straightforward and requires understanding of issues managers generally know already. Along with industry economics and competitive dynamics, you need to understand the true demand for your offering, their value relative to competitors and your position in the life cycle. With these concepts in mind, you can set the right pricing strategy and be ready to change with the market to really maximize profits. Okay. Thank you and see you next time.